Okay, let's look at the vertical profile on the roundabout. So we create the horizontal element of our roundabout um, as shown in a previous video. And this controls the starting and ending point. So what we want to do is generate a vertical somehow by um, using what we expect to see in the design. So typically what I would expect to see in the design would be one at least one of my roadways pass through or where my roundabout will be located should have an elevation. So what we did was we profiled the outer edge or the the geometric circulatory line and we start by adding this flat or planar linear element and the way we establish that elevation for that element is we use a slope the vertical slope offset command and I'll show that in a second but we we assign a 0% slope from our vertical element. So in other words, from our alignment, we go 0% with no vertical offset, and we set the centroid to that elevation. So basically what we're doing, doing is we're setting the center part of this line at a 0% offset from the alignment. And we do that using this profile slope from element. Then the way we create an S-curve or a parabolic curve on the profile, and again, this profile is solely meant to establish an elevation for the circulatory. It, it, apart from being ruled to that center line, there's nothing that would stop or prohibit a user from coming in and making adjustments to this. So you certainly could reprofile this line, just making sure that the at the place where the line meets, that you have the same grade entering as you do exiting. Otherwise, you'd have a discontinuity in your vertical alignment. So the way we establish the profile on the circulatory is to simply use our rules. So we snap a tangent at 2% and a given length. So I just basically arbitrarily create a tangent snap to this projected slope at the origin or at a key point. And then I come back here and I do the same thing, snapping and extending it back. And by locking in the value of 2% and negative 2% or rather 2% on the forward slope, I assure that I have a nice smooth 2% slope across this area. Next, if we look at this, we'll see that again, I have a snap value in place. So in other words, I once this tangent was established, I establish a second tangent point by snapping to the end of the first one. And again giving a negative 2% slope. This is then trimmed, these two tangents are then trimmed using the trim to intersection command and they generate the PI that generates the PI location. So all the values that I have are simply a tangent with a percent grade and a length, uh, another tangent with a percent grade and a length, a snap point tangent with a percent grade, and I do key in a length, but the trim to element or intersection command um, overrides that. And in fact, we don't even need to use the trim to intersection um, in most cases because we go and we do a complex curve or rather a profile curve between elements. So when we 
place the curve in between these two tangents, it will trim them. And then we complex that together. So that creates our profile. So let's look at placing this and see how it interacts. Okay, so I've set up a simple test. So um, basically, we're going to place the cell, the rotary, at the intersection point of these two alignments. Now I've established a profile, and it's just a very simple constant profile along this line here. So uh, I'm going to Again, place the cell, and I'll go to the RAB circulatory, and I'll just place a small rotary. And we simply select the first reference, and that should have our elevation established. The second reference can be a 2D or 3D, or in other words, an element with an elevation or without, it doesn't matter because we, we are sloping 0% offset from this. So we're going to reset and accept our placement. So we have our, our rotary placed. And let's come in here. And we're going to look at the S-curve. So again, I place this linear element at 200 feet. So my profile is at 200 feet. And you can see it established that grade at 200 feet because it's a 0% offset from the centroid. So let, let's do this. Let's look at what will happen when we change. If everything's working right, when we change the grade, so we come into the slope and rather the elevation. And I want to set this to 210. So we see at 210, my rotary now moves up. So because my elevation changes, the elevation of the rotary changes. Now, again, we can, change, we can go away from this. This was just to establish an initial profile, a starting point for the position of the cell, the rotary cell. And you know, and keep it as close to the alignment geometry. Now, if your alignment geometry uh, varies going across the rotary, of course, you're going to want to, you know, look at the optimal elevation or profile for that rotary. And you simply can readjust or reassign that by creating a new profile. So that's it. Um, I hope this helps.